Hi guys, Sherry here. For the next few weeks, I wanted to share something a little different here on the Creative Push. I recently went on a wonderful trip through southern Spain and Portugal, and I've been working on how I could share that experience with my audience. I will feature six episodes here on my podcast. You can also see photos on the blog and video on my YouTube channel. Those links are in the show notes. Don't worry, I will still be putting out some normal content, but I wanted you to be the first to learn about my incredible travel experience that has sparked new creative endeavors you will learn about in the future. This series is about the beautiful places, culture, history, and the food that I was able to experience recently throughout southern Spain and Portugal. I hope you'll follow along and enjoy learning a little about these incredible places. On day three of our trip, we had an enjoyable bus ride through the Adalusia region of southern Spain. As we left the city of Madrid and headed south, we witnessed miles and miles of agricultural landscapes, scenic mountains, and rolling valleys. From our window seats, we admired the fields of verdant olive trees, fruit trees, sunflowers, and vineyards etched perfectly through the terrain. About three hours into our trip, we took a detour and stopped in a charming little town called Valdepinas located in the center of grape growing district well known throughout Spain for its wine. Aside from the wineries, Val of Pinas has a rich history and culture. The town is home to several museums including the Museum of Wine and the Museum of Contemporary Art. Our bus drove down the narrow streets with only inches between the old buildings before stopping at the entrance of the La Bodega Las Estrellas Winery. This 5th century family-owned 200-year-old organic winery is located in what's known as the Castilla-La Mancha wine region, the home of Don Quixote. The owners produce wines naturally without additives or sulfites. We toured the winery, the cellar, and sampled their red, white, and rosé wines along with a small sample plate of fresh bread with some sort of topping, said to be something Don Quixote enjoyed from the book. The host was very kind, the wine was tasty, and the tour was delightful. From there, we explored the streets around the winery, taking in the beautiful Spanish architecture. While walking towards the downtown square, called Plaza de Espanana, above the Siwan Alcade area, there were several colorful umbrellas hung high above the street with cables offering shade as we walked. It was beautiful witnessing the shimmering colors under the bright sunlight. Each casted fascinating geometric shadows onto the brick facade as we passed by the local shops and cafes. The Plaza de Espanana is a beautiful square surrounded by historical buildings. There we found a table outside one of the many cafes and the server brought us some small complimentary bites of fried fish in a basket that were seasoned perfectly. Jose, being the perfect host, ordered some traditional tapas, including roasted potatoes with tomato, croquettes, and manchego cheese, all of which were delicious. I enjoyed the cold Spanish beer called Alhambra while relaxing under the shade of the umbrella in the summer heat. We all got back on the bus and headed off to our next destination from Valdepeñas towards Cordoba, about 125 miles south. The terrain showcased more of the same, olive trees, sunflower fields, and beautiful whitewashed buildings characteristic of the region's Arab and Roman influences. We checked into the Hotel Eurostar's Palace in Cordoba, a five-star hotel within walking distance to the historical Mosque Cathedral, also known as Las Mesquita, an immense mosque dating back to 784 AD. This charming 2,000 plus year old city hosts beautiful flowers, gardens, medieval castles, and moats. Puente Romano crosses over the Guadalquivir River in Cordoba. The river is the fifth longest in the Iberian Peninsula and is the only major navigable river in Spain.
We took a few hours to tour the mosque cathedral and its stunning Islamic architecture. The building was originally a mosque, but after the Christian conquest of Cordoba, it was converted into a cathedral. Our tour guides shared the many historical milestones, as well as the art that was beautifully displayed throughout. I was awestruck by the intricate details of the arches, the domes, and the columns. The complex mosaics magically captured the light from above while leaving me contemplating the mystery of its holiness. We headed back to the hotel to freshen up before going to dinner at a small quaint restaurant. It was late when we finished eating, but Jose had a surprise for us. We found ourselves rushing towards the Alcazar Palace of Christian Kings before it closed. As the last to get in through the front gate, we walked through the palace out back into a brilliant light show infused with music known as the Musical Nights at the Alcazar. Throughout the area, under the moonlight, music synced to colorful light projections on the ponds, fountains, gardens, and architectural structures. It was an enchanting experience of wonder and amazement for our entire group that lasted more than an hour. Only three days in, and I was feeling overwhelmed by all the history and beauty of our trip so far in Spain. Each day we traveled hundreds of miles by bus and walked six to seven miles by foot. As I closed my eyes after our third day, I had no problems falling asleep despite being even more excited about what was ahead. I hope you enjoyed this Portuguese Spain adventure travel episode and that you'll come back and listen to more here on the Creative Push. If you liked what you heard, it would really help me out if you would like, subscribe, and share this podcast. Be sure to visit my blog and YouTube channels for more. Those links are in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening.